I don't know when you'll be watching this, but it is Friday night in the studio. It's kind of a hot night up here. It's cool outside. It's raining. I've had a little bit of thunder. And uh, let's make a mess. I, I can make a big mess in a pretty short amount of time. So I'm going to start out with this junk canvas that I've had in my closet for a few years. Um, I used to work for an art supply company. Shocker, I know. Um, but I used to get to keep supplies and used canvas. Uh, we would use them for photo shoots and then they'd basically be trashed. But they were still good canvas. So me and my coworkers got to take them home and do projects with them. But now I have a lot of them <laughs> and I haven't used them all up. So I'm finally gonna sit down and repurpose a few and upcycle them. So let's see what we can do. Rule number one, shake your paint. Oh, uh, rule number 1A, make sure the caps are closed. Otherwise, that'd be disastrous. I'm just gonna use some acrylic craft paint. Got a bunch of it. All different fun colors. So I made a new friend the other day. Um, my dad found this giant leopard moth in the garage and he thought it was dead, but he brought it up to me uh, to see and it was very much alive but nocturnal so it was very sleepy. I was able to get this picture of it and then set it free outside. But I had never seen one before and I thought this would be a nice subject for a painting so I'll do something incorporating that. I'm gonna go for kind of a peachy mauve color. It's really nice starting on a canvas that is already used. I think it takes some of the intimidation away. I get slightly puzzled by people who are afraid to try art or try painting. You know, they're afraid of messing up, making mistakes, and well if you already start with a damaged or botched canvas, you can only go up from there, so kind of takes the intimidation away. I think I'm going to do sort of an ombre effect with this. I think we need to fade into another color. I'm just going to keep adding paint to my palette and see what happens. I like colors that have I like colors that have a little dirt and grime to them. Let's see, do I want the green on the bottom or on the top? Let's go crazy. Let's go top. Right now this is looking very 80s. That's okay. It's not a bad thing. Keep blending. Pink, so I'm still seeing some of that blue shining through from the underpainting. Sometimes you can work with that. I had an art teacher in college and we did a project where um, you thought of the end product and then worked back for, backward from there. So. If you had a painting that you wanted to be cool in tone, paint the thing bright orange first. And when you're done, you may only have like a sliver of that orange left, but it really adds some texture and adds something to the underside of the painting. I'm pretty down and dirty when it comes to art. I'll use whatever's lying around. Right now I'm using a plastic lid as my palette, so you don't have to buy really expensive supplies to make art. Kind of letting some of the colors just mix on the canvas. 
give sort of textured background. Doesn't have to be perfect. If you're watching this for perfection, you have come to the wrong place. I'm no Bob Ross. That man was a treasure. Also, as good as he was with animals, I'm kind of surprised they haven't made like a Disney movie based on Bob Ross. I have a rough idea in mind, but I, I'm not 100% sure where I'm going. That's the fun of it. Just sort of make up the roads. Got to get away from the screens and get your hands dirty. Sometimes before I clean my brush off in water, I just paint up the sides. It's a good way to use up excess paint. I read that leopard moths actually eat willow leaves, sunflowers, citrus trees. Um, they'll feed on a variety of things. So I think, I think I'm gonna incorporate willow into this painting because it's pretty and it's kind of easy to paint. It's just a colored pencil, very sharp, so I can hopefully figure out where my branch is going to go. Let's do kind of a reverse S. Maybe I'll do a couple like the paint's drying pretty well so I can't even see my mark. I will get a darker pencil. sort of coming in just naturally just kind of haphazard with them they're long and they're skinny so you can't really mess them up just like they're blowing in a soft breeze and have them kind of wind around the branch maybe some one was eaten off one's curled up a little bit Branches just off the edge. Maybe 
scrape into the underpaint, that is just fine. That adds a little texture. Yeah, that looks about right. I'm gonna backlight these. Let's see. I'm gonna break out some neon. What color is this? Peach Punch. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna punch up these leaves. Already making a mess. Uh, rule number two of handling paint close the lids when you're done, or you'll get like this. Thankfully, it's acrylic. It dries fast. I'm use a longer, skinnier brush for this. With this brush, I'm just pressing hard for the areas I want to be wider and pressing softly for the areas that are thinner. And I kind of roll the brush as I go. These are some, uh, this is a willow tree that's sort of caught in twilight. Not the vampire movie, the uh, actual twilight. Make sure I don't lose my stem here. Gotta keep track of where that's at. Use more of a flat brush to block in where the moths are. Now we need to add some darkness to the leaves. After all, these guys only come out at night, so should be a little darker. Picturing this as like twilight, and they're just coming out to find a mate. sure if these leaves will work, but I'm just trying, just experimenting, seeing what happens when I mix these colors. I once heard an artist, a very wise artist, say, don't be concerned with painting pretty. Let the colors mix, see what happens. Yeah, it may look ugly, but really, what is ugly? And the fun thing about painting nature, you can get away with fudging a lot and making it up as you go. It's not like painting a face. I'm not 100% sure where the light source is on this painting yet. I guess I should have figured that out by now. But 
You're watching willows just sort of blow in the twilight, you know, in that really hot orange sun. It sort of hits them all in different places. Well, I think it might be coming from this way, because I just realized I'm painting the shadow on the stem over here, so making it up the go. Throw in a little bit of this purpley ultramarine kind of cobalt color, just for kicks. Sometimes it's like, well, I put it on my palette, might as well use it. Welcome to session number two of this painting. Uh, I don't like it. I've lived with it for about a day and uh, it's not quite where I want to go with it. So I'm going to change my mind because I'm an artist and I can do that. Um, but as every art teacher I had said, you can't just say, I don't like it, tell why. So I really want the focus to be more on the moths. I think they're too small. Um, I spent a little too much focus on the willow. And so that's just gonna become background texture. So I really want, want the moths to be bigger. So go big or go home. And I'm already home, so let's go big. We're just going to give a few areas kind of a wash, just sort of dull what's going on so I can put something on top of it. And when I say a wash, it's just mixing water with a little paint or paint with a little water.
kind of like that the the moth that we found sort of had tattered wings at the bottom. I like to think he had his night out, he had his fun, found his mate, and avoided getting eaten by a bat. Welcome to session three of the moth painting. Uh, session two got cut short because I had some company stop by. So picking up where I left off, it is a rainy Sunday afternoon and it's a perfect kind of day to paint. So let's make some art. Sometimes it's helpful to block darker areas in with a lighter color or a medium tone color just before you commit to a really stark contrast.
things don't have to be perfectly symmetrical, but just close enough. And no, I'm not completely making these spots up as I go. I do have a picture of the actual moth that we found that I'm using as a guide. But if I do mess some of the spots up, you'll never know. Sometimes if you mess up on one side, just mess up the same way on the other one, and then it'll look like you did that on purpose. I think insects are really fascinating. I mean, if you really sit down and look at one very closely, just the level of engineering involved in their bodies and the beauty of their design. I mean, a lot can be learned from insects, I think. Typically when I paint, I don't use black um, unless I'm going to start with a black canvas or black features heavily um, and I need to cover a large ground. The reason for this is that I find that you get much richer tone if you mix your own black and that can be achieved many ways. Um, since this is more cool, I think I'm going to stick with sort of really dark blues and purples instead of going into just solid black. Sometimes if you use just straight black out of a tube, it just kills the painting. Uh, if you mix your own, it it marries well with the tones that are already there. It's like a black that is already inhabiting that world, not one that's being brought in from another world, if that makes sense.
Sometimes I find myself holding my breath on, uh, on these little fiddly parts. You just don't want your brush to be shaky. Also don't paint when you're really hungry either. That, when your blood sugar drops, your hands get shaky. It's hard to paint straight lines. Yeah, you don't wanna be a starving artist. Just be the occasionally hungry artist. I'm digging the spots. So I'm thinking this is a really big moth that landed on some wallpaper of itself and some willow. That makes sense, right? your finger is just the right brush you need. Welcome to session number four of the moth painting. I think we're getting close, very close. Um, if you ever get stuck on a painting or drawing or anything you're working on really, I suggest read a book, watch a movie, go for a walk. Just taking a break and focusing on something else can unlock areas of your brain and your creativity to solve the problems that you were hung up on on another project. So. I recently rewatched the 2018 Wes Anderson film, Isle of Dogs, and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous stop motion uh, film, but it takes place in Japan, and I really was drawn to the really bold, just graphic element of the Japanese characters um, in certain scenes, and I thought that might fit nicely with this painting because this kind of looks like a faded you know silk screen or a piece of wallpaper so I think I'm gonna incorporate some Japanese characters but I didn't want to just straight up use Google Translate so I actually found out that a friend of a friend translates Japanese um, but turns out translating giant leopard moth into Japanese is harder than expected um, because obviously we have colloquial names for insects and animals 
but then there's also the proper scientific names, such as Hypercomp scribonia of the family Arctyanae, which is the giant leopard moth. Um, the closest we could find to that in Japanese was this, which is Itorigaka no Ganuisu, which means a type of moth of the Arctyanae family. So I know these two characters mean moth. This one is species, kind, or class, so this is as close as we could get. It's better than Google Translate, so I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use this, and I think it'll fit in nicely uh, somewhere here as a graphic element. Maybe it'll look like an old label that was on the silk screen. So let's give it a shot. Well, I sketched out the characters in pencil, but I think I'm going to emphasize them just with a marker. Now I'm just adding a few little, not quite shadows, but just some little hints of darkness next to the lines of the characters to make them stand out just a little more from the background. Now I'm just adding a little bit of or flaws and imperfections to the to the label just to make it look like it's on the wallpaper not floating above it but it was maybe put there a long time ago bits of it have chipped away again just sometimes a little a little grime a little smudge or a little dirt really add a nice flavor. It's like adding a savory note to a dessert. It makes the sweetness more rich. I think it's done, or at least as done as it's going to be at this point after I live with it for a few days and we'll probably find something else to fix on it. But I think it's ready to be signed. Good art provides people with a vocabulary about things they can't articulate. So this is exactly the kind of painting I wanted to make, even though I didn't know where it was going in the beginning. So apparently I had something to say about this beautiful moth uh, that my dad found. And thank you so much for joining me on the journey of this painting. Now, the video that you saw is under an hour long, but I usually paint in one hour sessions over the course of a few days. So this painting actually took four hours or so, give or take. and. That just goes to show you, art takes time. Don't rush, don't feel like you need to get a painting done in half an hour, because it probably won't be a good painting. Take time with it. Do parts of it and then let it rest and see where you land, because you may change your mind midway through like I did. And you may find inspiration along the way that you didn't expect to find by taking your time. And that's the whole idea of these exercises, is to really 
slow down and be in the moment and calibrate your hands, your mind, and your heart to express yourself. So if you liked what you saw today, please subscribe to my channel, Nicole's Creative Life, and you can follow along with all of my hobbies. Of course, I describe myself as a collector of hobbies, and I'm always trying something new. And I would like you to try something new as well. Let me know about your hobbies and maybe I'll feature them. If you enjoyed the music you heard today, it was provided by lofigirl.com. The featured artist is Brillian, and you can download his free album, Bedtime Stories Part 2, from lofigirl.com. Thanks for watching.